Welcome all to this week's presentation. This one is about a long case clock that nobody else was prepared to undertake. I got roped in and eventually found that this was a most unusual clock. Just looking at it, you would say it looks like a fairly standard German long case clock. Nothing unusual stands out immediately. The front and the rear of the movement appear to be a fairly basic time strike and chime long case movement. The back plate correctly identifies the clock as German with the Kinzel trademark and a, quite a list of German patents and patents pending, as you can see from the list here on the back plate. But wait a minute. What's going on here? No chain drive sprockets for any of the trains. Wires off the top and the bottom of the movement. This is not a normal weight driven long case movement. An electric motor and drive pulleys from the motor arbor to the top of the movement for a fiber drive wheel. This is really something new. An electric motor with a drive pulley and another drive pulley at the top of the movement. This certainly is something unique. In all my 60 years of repairing and playing around with clocks, I've never seen anything like this before. A DC electric motor with a drive belt to the top of the striking train and a small spring barrel to run the time train. As I studied this movement closer, I was able to determine that the motor had a negative connection for the battery at the top of the movement. There was another connection for a battery at the bottom of the movement. And on the right hand side of the movement as part of the striking system, there are switches which turn off the power to the motor. The few diagrams that I've shown here come from the internet from a similar system. And now I knew what I'd gotten myself into. It looked really, really complicated. But surely there was an easy way to sort this out. Information that I downloaded from the site on the internet was in German. So I had to proceed with a translation before I could work out exactly what was going on. And rather than me read this out to you, you can read this at your leisure, because this just shows you how unusual and difficult the whole system is. Keep going, it's not finished yet. Here's the last of the translation. Thank goodness for that. I spoke too soon. When you look down between the plates, there is a complicated network of levers, cams, springs, slides, and other mechanical pieces that somehow make all this clock do everything it's supposed to do at the right time. I could never imagine how I would ever get this back together again if I dismantled it. The small barrel mounted on the center shaft of the clock has a small spring contained within it. And that is kept in a fully wound condition by the motor as it runs every quarter of an hour. If there's an electric power failure, that little mainspring can keep the time train operating for 15 hours. Not only was the movement inherently complicated, but it had been previously repaired, adding further difficulties to understanding how it operated. But eventually I was able to sort things out. And here's a list of the problems and what I've done to overcome them.
and the problems continue here. After three days of studying the movement, making small adjustments and repairs, I was able to have everything running correctly. And here's a sequence of operation that is required and had to be met with before the clock would operate correctly. No wonder no one else wanted to take on this job. What a clock! The research references that I'd found indicated that the motor in these clocks operated on 3 volts DC. And that was right from the very day they were made in the 1930s. They used a transformer from the mains, a rectifier to convert the AC to DC, and then a resistor circuit to supply a 3 volts DC output for the motor operation. Using components available today off the shelf from places like JCAR, I'm going to be able to make a power supply to do exactly the same as the original. And it will be typically the same sort of power supply as is currently used for domestic alarm systems. Here's a couple of little videos for you to watch. You can see the motor running freely without any load. And then you can see the motor operating the strike and the chime systems. Despite initial trepidation, having worked my way through this movement and understood exactly what's going on, I now find it is quite a simple movement to understand but pulling it to pieces would be a nightmare. It just goes to show that we never stop learning. There is always something out there in the clock world that we've not seen yet. Thanks for watching this presentation. If you have any comments or questions, you can send them to me on the email address at the bottom of this page. Thanks for watching. I hope you're staying safe and goodbye.